can start. Work capacity, so go ahead and start. Go ahead and start. Okay, I, I told you a little bit about who I am. Uh, David and I have been married 25 years in April. We knew about, uh, knew each other about seven years before we married. We had three kids, twin daughters who were 21 and in college. Our son is, uh, will be 20 in December. Is currently active duty military um, Marine Corps. Hurrah! Hurrah! Happy belated birthday. No. Thank you. Uh, and is stationed in Jerusalem at the embassy there for his first duty station for those who care. Anyway, um, I knew David. Uh, we met before he had uh, released his first book, so I've been there the whole damn way. So, pardon <laughs> my French, but anyway, so uh, start with Bridget. I'm Bridget Correa. I'm married to Larry Correa. He is the New York Times bestselling novelist. He writes probably his most famous thing is the Monster Hunter International series. He also has written a grimoire series and some sort. Like I don't, I don't actually keep track of how many books he has. <laughs> There's too many. I think he's about 25 books or so. We've been married for 25 years. For a kid. About 25 years. Don't yeah. quote me on that in case I got it wrong. Yeah. But um, we have four kids: 22-year-old daughter, 20-year-old daughter, 18-year-old son, and a 10-year-old son. So we we are still kind of in the trenches. And I've been there since the beginning when he was homeless and a broke college student who didn't own a car yet. So it's been a ride. <laughs> okay, I am Sandy Rothman. I honestly am so short. I don't know if Mike's here. He's there. Yeah, he's here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so all of our husbands are tall. Oh, but tall. Short. <clears throat> um, I have been there since the beginning. He actually started by we weren't allowed to call him an author because he just wanted to write the story that he told our children when they were growing up. He wrote the story. I have when he um, wrote it, we all got to pick our names, we got to be part of the process, and then when he became a best-selling author, it was real. And when it became real, it was real for all of us, but I will tell you, when it became real, it just meant a lot more work. <laughs> and not just for him, but for us, because we are there to say, keep writing, it's okay that you can't help with that. It's okay that you can't take the kids wherever they need to Have go. you had any vegetables this week? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what a bed is? Have you met one lately? <laughs> so we are married in December, um, 27 years. Um, we've had, everyone says, are you military? No, we're not. We're computers. So we've moved and moved and moved, but now we're kind of settled in How long has he been writing though? Because state. Um, I want to say like maybe 10 years. Like how long have you been writing? But she's right. Uh, About since 20, 2011. Okay. Good answer. Because he's a new being. And so, so compared to the Larry and, and we also yeah, have right. the 2011 tells you that we have little kids. Um, in 2011 we had a 10 year old and a 9 year old. And all of a sudden our roles became very different. And our children just had to get used to it, and that's the way it is. And there's sometimes we're pushing back, but for the most part, I mean, we have one that co graduated college and is starting his master's, and we have another who's about to maybe finish college <laughs> and move on to, I hope, his master's. Um, I'm Jennifer Yanez. I'm married to Jonathan Yanez. We've been married 11 and a half years. He's been writing for 10 and a half years of those. Um, but if, you know, truth be told, they've always been writing. Um, but we've been published for about, since 2012. And, um, They're the babies. Yeah, we're the babies. <laughs> we have a six-year-old daughter and two-year-old son. And uh, I have been in marketing and advertising. I've been in an agency, was slated to move up, take partnership, when things really started to um, really sink in, in terms of the authorship as a career. And um, instead of moonlighting as support, I left my um, agency job to work on our publishing instead. Um, and now we're publishing books, and we've produced our first film. We've got our second um, in production or in pre-production and development, I guess technically. And um, yeah, we're all in. I drink the Kool-Aid, so we're wearing <laughs> it together. We just stay. They've all drunk the Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> else and our children don't know any different. They don't know what it's not like to have their parents 
not home and talking business over dinner and um, you know, even one evening we weren't really talking anything, they were just too tired and I thought, like, are we talking about books? Are we talking about audio books? Can we talk about your authors? <laughs> so that is just like, it is part of the ethos of our home. Uh, my name is Blake Hudson. I'm uh, married to Stephanie Hudson. I think we've been married seven years. Yeah. Been together. <laughs> um, Good answer. <laughs> we've got three kids: ten, six, and three. Well, nearly six and three. And um, for the eight years we've been together, I'd say four and a half, five of that was a stay-at-home dad. And uh, now. Uh, I'm the husband of a seven-figure author, pub, run our own publishing house of a high six-figure income, and um, yeah, it's been a been a busy busy few years, busy few years. Okay, there's a couple of ways that we've done this panel in the past. Um, <coughs> Bridget and I've done this panel. Oh gosh, I don't even know ago. how many times we've done um, this. I think I think in this small uh, a time slot and in this smaller or larger venue or smaller venue, um, that the best way would be for you guys to ask the specific questions, because we can talk all day long about how we live with our husbands, wives, spouses, kids, how we make it work, but I think you guys probably have specific questions or or concerns or whatever points that you'd like to raise, so. Does that work for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I already have a question. All right, and I think whip it out here. Then. All the right people are here to, to talk about it. Uh, so my wife is excellent at writing, but she's not so excited about the the marketing and the publishing and that side. And one of the things she's expressed to me, I'm, I'm full time and, and working, is uh, hey, maybe you can help me by taking on some of this, some of the business side. And I'm a little non-committal about it, honestly. So I, I haven't committed to her at all about that's what I want to do, but I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts. I, I know before we get into the fancy people over here who yeah, do yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> David, David and I, when we first started, I did like his bookings and autographing signings, you know, that type of thing. Right. Um, and we kept it in-house. That was what I, I did. Um, and I also, at that time, you know, social media wasn't really a thing yet, but we were getting into that. And so I would handle that side, and I still kind of keep track of the fan club, and, you know, which is all around the world and everything, and, and try to keep that off of him, if you, if you want to put it that way. Um, because also David is not really great at remembering that he has emails that need to be answered. So I ha I'm his auxiliary brain, as he calls it. Uh, every email that he gets from anything important business-wise gets duplicated to me, and I make sure that he answers it. Um, and that takes a lot off of him because he's not sitting there having to go through and make sure. And just doing things like that can actually can actually help a lot. And you can do that, you know, at four o'clock in the morning or on a Sunday, or whatever. Can so. I just say though that? <laughs> Like, bless everybody who can work with your spouse, mm -hmm. but... It's not everybody you, can, so... If you can't be all in on it, yeah. I would suggest that you make that clear from the beginning mm -hmm. and have someone else do it, yes. because yeah. I Hiring cannot, it out is a, is it, a wonderful thing. I mean, thing. if you can do it, great. But if you're not committed to it, you really have to be committed to it, because it is not something yeah. that you leave at 5 o'clock. Right. right. I don't want to make promises to her. And you, and and you, and also, you also, you can't do it this week and then not do it next week. Right? Yeah. You have to, I mean, you're in for the, the long haul. And so, I mean, I would say figure out if you want to do it. And if you don't, have that fight now instead <laughs> of down the road. Yeah. And then be kind of clear about, we call it separation of church and state in our house. Like, this is the business part. This is like life. Life. <laughs> Because for us, the only thing that matters is we call it Team Korea. Team Korea mm -hmm. in it to win it. And so I, I cannot be all in on those aspects for my partner. And it's only going to, you would know better because you're in it with your spouses. But I, I, for us, if you're not interested in potentially taking it over and being very passionate about it, I would suggest that you have that conversation and maybe that argument now. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, I was actually doing it for David before we married, like six years before. 
So it was not a, oh, by the way, we're married and you have a new job. Anyway. So. If I can jump in on that one Please as well. do. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah, you've got to be committed to it. But I think a lot of people, probably where I was a few years back, what can I do? Or can, am I even capable of doing something? Mm -hmm. like and what I would say is, my background, I trained as an audio engineer, I joined the army, I drove HGV trucks and I, I fixed roofs. So what's that got to do with publishing? Absolutely nothing. But YouTube is a fantastic place. These courses, <laughs> this conference in itself. If I can learn how to make book covers, Facebook ads, Amazon ads, you know, go to conferences, go to book signings, anybody can do it. But you've got to want to learn to do it. But again, you have to commit. You have to commit. I definitely want to let everyone know that one year ago, I was here in the audience, and everything, my friends that I had met in June of that year, all of you, <laughs> uh, two years, three years before, yeah. <coughs> um, they said one thing that I just felt like, okay, my life is better. Because they're always going to say, can you read my book? Can you read my book? Well, I'm a full-time teacher. I have to read other books. I have other things to do. I have to make sure at the time kids were doing homework and all that. When you were saying about make the commitment, I already know that I'm not as good as him at all that he's doing. And I don't know if you know M.A. Rockman, if you've gone to any of his things. He does it all. And one time we decided for a week I was going to shadow him. Oh, I made it one day. I was like, we're just going to argue because I can't do it the way he needs, not wants necessarily, but needs it done. So he either has to do it himself, and by the way, this isn't his job. <coughs> He's still, uh, <coughs> he works at Indy. Can I say Indy? He still <laughs> he works full time as an engineer. So it's not like this is a hobby and he's using all this time to do it. He's doing both. So we really had to accept, we don't see him now. Why would I want to do more on my side of him? Or why, how could I do more? Now granted, when we're empty nesters and all that, I might rethink some of it. Man. What do you are you, because you are doing it. Yes. yes. Yeah, I look at it like a business. Who is the best qualified? And <coughs> where, where does this fit in in terms of um, the value? Is this something like we don't have the income or the overhead to pay someone else to run this portion for us and for them to do a good job or you know or is the other person good enough because we don't have the like uh, monetary availability but we have the time resource available to invest and to do the learning and to grow into this and you know marketing and branding and all of that, it takes a certain mindset, right? Because our minds, we learn differently, we're built differently, we have different skill sets that come naturally and some that just don't work. I have a client, and I'm a client, she's just dyslexic when it comes to numbers. She's not gonna do her ads. She can't analyze that data, but I would say more importantly, she's writing killer books, so her time shouldn't be spent exactly. analyzing mm -hmm. that data. It should be writing the next amazing, fun story and interacting with her readership, which she does so well. So um, you have to think about it that way, too, because you wouldn't want an employee who's only half in, who's not following up on the ads, who's letting an ad spend out of control without any results because it's not you know, the bid is too high, it's not good keywords, it's um, target, doing the wrong targeting. You want someone who can learn to understand that and will be committed to it. And you, you probably, uh, I know that David at one point in time, early in his career, figured out how much he was getting paid <coughs> an hour yeah. mm -hmm. to write a book, mm -hmm. okay? And that's one of the things you need to figure out is how much, how much is your time worth, mm -hmm. okay? And if it's cheaper to have somebody else who's better at it, do it, then let them do it. If it's better for you as a spouse or support person to do it, do it. If the writer wants to take that time away from writing to do it, and it's up to you to figure out which is which is best for you and how to make that work. Okay, we're running out of time, so we need to get to the next question. So, um, like I have the 
part of 100% supporting my husband in any way I possibly can. Sure. I do not have the actual ability to do that. Yet. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right. Yet. Now, my learning curve, because of the disabilities I have, mm -hmm. is going to take me a good portion sure. of time. Right? I'm just like so, 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 what I need to know is, like in the beginning, how do you figure out what you can pay for the best ways to get that stuff, right? Because like, I can't go out and earn an income mm -hmm. by myself to pay for stuff. Do you have children? I have a 20 year old autistic son. Okay. Um, so, you know, like, I want to help. It's, but it's just I can't like, be it's the just like anything else in life. You have to figure it out uh, what you can do and what and how you can do it. Um, I know a lot of spouses are like, oh my God, I read everything my husband has ever written. Or who like like yeah, mm -hmm. spouse, whatever. Yeah. Significant person. Well my my yeah. husband ask me every day, every day. Are you gonna read? Are you gonna read? Are you gonna read? <laughs> okay. I don't I don't I haven't read a book that David's written. But um, since what, David? Path of the Fury? I yeah. wouldn't know, dear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, because we sit at the dinner table every night and we talk plot development, yes. character development, yes. and I read those chapters and, and I don't care anymore. My <laughs> husband has a spouse, it's his computer and honor him, and I don't care, okay? But that's, that's part of the support. If reading your husband's stuff is going to support him, then do that. If that's not what you can do, do something else. Find what you can do and build on it. Because none of us started this at the top up here. We all had to learn. And, and now what is really, really cool is just like Blake said, you've got YouTube. You've got these online courses. You've got master classes. Um, you have women who, you know, well, okay. Spouses who have been there. <laughs> it started as a women's panel, okay? So. I've been Stephanie for yes. a long period of time yes. as her on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I've logged into her Facebook, mm -hmm. been her. We've all done that. <laughs> He's better at it than I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a wig and everything. <laughs> but but you, find what, you, know, you, you find what you can start and you start building on it. And you have to work on it pretty much every day a little bit. And it may, you know, in some days you may have a lot that you can do. I can go on Facebook and spend 14 hours with the fan club because they're all at different cons and they all want to know, oh, yeah, yeah. what's the next book do? David has answered that damn question I can't tell you how many times. <laughs> and I'm like, and, you know, I put long posts out on Facebook and I just recycle those, you know? Sometimes it's as simple as that. Where do you recommend finding support? Groups and things, whatever. There is no support, mm -hmm. but right. coming to right. these right. type right. of environments right. will right. help you to find people who are also struggling with. What is your What is your person right? Uh, fantasy. Fantasy. Mm -hmm. Go to cons. Get that network start started. You know, mm -hmm. go to cons or, or and the dinners or the, the dinners. Yeah, the, the groups or you know anything. <coughs> you know, go to the library and talk to people there. You know, start building that network of of who will support that that genre for you, um, and start building that up. You know, if 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 Jennifer's the one that I need to talk to about you know making a movie, then I know you know because we met at Archer's Rest a couple of years ago in Napa, and you know David met four or five people that, that we keep in touch with on that. You network and you just start building that. And, and that's, again, that's something, and you may never see these people except on Facebook. But if it's somebody you can go, okay, Bridget, how do you do this? Mm -hmm. That's the, one of the comments that I want to make, because I feel like my experiences with people in the writing community, adjacent community, for the most part, really want to help each other out. And if they're not the kind of person who wants to help each other out, then Maybe you should question if, you know, like, but I, I found that more people are willing to answer the questions or to help problem solve whatever it is that others are dealing with mm -hmm. than are going to shoot you down. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just, hey, I don't actually know how to solve that. I might know a guy. Or, hey, I read this really great article that somebody else put up on the blog. 
So a lot of it, I think, is just being brave enough to say that I need help and being willing to hear more than one time, I don't actually know how to solve that, but why don't you ask so and so? And then being brave enough to I've ask told, so I've told so. my kids forever, if you're not adult enough for ask, ask, to ask for help, you're never going to get the help you need. Plus, be brave so, enough to you know, fail. Be you know, brave enough sure, to try it yeah. out and be like, well, All they're going to tell you is, I don't know, or no, I'm not going to tell you. And <laughs> you're no worse off than you are right now. I think to expand on that, um, I think that you have, in the indie world, take, take traditional publishing out of it, indie world authors, they fall into two camps. You've got indie authors and their spouses who are on here on a panel. They're doing talks. They're all here, they're all here accessible and want to help everybody else. And those are the, probably the most successful indie authors. Mm -hmm. The ones that don't make it, they're under a rock somewhere, staying away because you're all competition. Mm -hmm. And you're not competition because readers don't read one author, they read multiple authors. Well, we have a thing, and it, ironically or not, it's that the raising tide raises all the ships because, mm -hmm. I mean, we don't get anything out of pulling the crab back into the pot. It, it's more of a like, oh, you really like this author? Well, <coughs> I'm writing something in, that's similar and you might find that interesting because it's not like, I don't know, we all have the pile of books. We're all excited to find new writers. We're all excited to find new creators. I mean, it takes so much longer to create a book than it does to read it. So like, you can't really outpace what's out there One writer, read. one writer, yeah. So you talked about how do I get started. And I think a lot of times we think as spouses that we need to jump in and I need to be killer at Amazon ads and Facebook ads, right? I need to know how to make the best cover ever. Your author spouse, unless, you know, even 75 books in, they're also still growing. So you don't have to jump in uh, you know, level 10, you can build out at level one. This month, I'm just getting it my head wrapped around Amazon ad. And guess what? There's at least three guys or gals here this week who are telling you the very basics of Amazon ads. And then if you can figure out Amazon ad, you've got the building the foundation to understand Facebook ads, mm -hmm. right? And then just like your author spouse is going to write a better book, and then the next book's going to get better, and then the next book's going to get better, your ads are going to get better and better, your email system's going to get better and better. You've already taken the first step. Or it won't, and you'll know that you have to pay somebody for that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but you but, don't but have to But you've already taken the first step because you're here. Yeah. And if you can't get networks and, and, and people on your side at, the, at, a, at a conference like this, then it's not it's not for you. Yeah. And what's but really I think important taking that first step. So what's really there. important is ask them what they need. Yeah. What do they need? You're gonna say what you need, so ask them what they need. Like mm -hmm. I go to breakfast when he hates breakfast. But I go to <laughs> breakfast with him on the weekends just so he can talk and talk and talk yeah. and talk and then talk a little more and I think I get a little bit of it, but I'm supporting him. Yeah. I'm enjoying him talking it out. So I'm doing something he needs. But being a sounding board, just yeah. just that sometimes is is a lot of support right there, especially when they're just starting out because they're 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 still kind of finding their their, their voice and finding their head in, in the game and you know how much am I gonna put into this and just being there to listen. Plus there's a lot to be said yeah. for just saying the words, I think you can do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I support the time that you are taking away from whatever it is so that you can do this. Okay, okay. That, yes, I believe in you. Yeah. That kind of goes into my question. Um, so one, like, does that self-doubt ever go away? No. No. Okay. No. <laughs> no. no. You've heard that imposter syndrome crap thing? Yeah. 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 That's always okay. with you. Yeah. No. Um, and two, um, you know, when that does come up, like creep up. So my husband's a space opera author. He's on his second <laughs> book, and welcome to ride. <laughs> he's starting to get fans, and yeah. it's really cool starting to pick up. Um, he had a guy from Tokyo reach out to him via email, say I read your book, and he's mm -hmm. like, "What in the world?" Like, so, but the self doubt is still there. Yeah, so, we'll be there. Uh, yeah, David's got a hundred day book. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's so still gonna be there. How you know each person's so different, but how do you support your spouse like with the emotional aspect of the person? Same way you would as their spouse for anything else. Anything else? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they were yeah. a doctor, you would support them that way. Mm -hmm. If they're right. 
what's their love language? What yeah. makes them feel affirmed? Is it, you know, just the hand on the shoulder? Is it just those words reaffirming and congratulating them? And, um, just listening to them listening for an hour while they finish the phone? Time. Running to the grocery store to pick up a two liter bottle of Coke Zero works at my yeah. house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it just, you know, anyone in any time they're putting this piece of themselves out there, a skill set, a creative aspect, it doesn't matter. Same way, it's they doubt baby. them being a father, being yeah. a good husband, being a good wife. Like yep. you support them and you encourage them in the same ways. Just don't let them read their one star reviews because those no, are no, 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 they even need to do that. They need to do that because because not you're you know it, it's, it's no yes yes no 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 no. It's just like a kid going to school. You're never you're never going to please everybody. You're never going to make everybody happy. There's always going to be that one. Okay, and if they can't deal with it at the beginning, they're not going to deal with it at the end, and they're not going to deal with it 40 years in. They have to figure. They have to figure that out. If they can't handle the heat, they need to get out of the kitchen. And that one star review at the beginning, and you're going to tell them, you know, what do they know? You know, <laughs> David. David had this guy who read every single book mm -hmm. and left a one star review for every <laughs> single one of them. <laughs> I'm never reading another David Webber again. Yeah. And they all, okay. The next book comes out, the guy's back, it's the same review. You know, you just have to deal with it and just live, and, you know, learn and live, so. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, my wife has that. She has one review, one, 12 books, 12 one stars. So what she's paying for the privilege. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, because obviously they paid something for the book. You know, they didn't just, you know, pick it up out of, you know, thin air. Somebody got it. Somebody paid, paid royalties on that book, so, yeah. But if they can't handle it at the beginning, <coughs> they're not going to handle it at the end. David's been told, and I know Larry's been told by certain publishers that we know and love. Um, you know, they're the old guard now. They're, they they transitioned from the new, the, the babies with five books to, you know, all the way through, up through, you know, you've got 30 books, you've got whatever. And now you've got, you know, you're the old guard. People are starting to say, I read you win, and I, I followed your career for, you know, and that kind of stuff. And and he still goes. I don't I don't feel like I'm the old guard. And I'm like, you know, yeah, you're the old guard. So <laughs> deal with it, you know. And, and at some point, they've got to make that that transition. So I'm curious what the male perspective is on this. On supporting. That's a great. That's a great. The cat of lambs right here. <laughs> My wife's a complete and utter nightmare. In okay. Every sense <laughs> of the word. But um, yeah, she doesn't do things, you know. It, the way I do things, because um, we're just completely different people. So it can be. She's easy. the creative. You're not. Well, we're both creative. But yeah, but in different ways. Yeah. But no. uh, otherwise, you'd be writing too. She do. does. Oh well. Excuse <laughs> 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 me. Right. We have totally different. I've written too many. Yeah, totally different mentalities about how to do things. So it can be incredibly frustrating because I'm like, you know, let's be regimented about this, mm -hmm. and she's like all over the place, like mm -hmm. ADHD, and. You know, I'll have a deadline, she has a deadline, but her deadline is up until like 30 seconds before she has to press publish on a pre-order. Uh, you know, so it's, it's difficult, but obviously the best form of support for somebody like that is if that's how they work, you can't make them work any other way. Right. You can't, you know, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make a drink. Yeah. So probably the best thing is not to be going, well, you know, it's dinner time, you should have finished that book two hours ago, <laughs> or whatever. So. You got to allow them to do their thing, and maybe shield them a little bit, because you know, like the mother-in-law calling up, or the kids, or want attention. When she's at work, it might be two o'clock in the morning while she's working, right. or whatever. So, so I know, you know, David, get your own back the next day when she's finished the book. David writes. <laughs> David's a night writer, and he was way before we married. And when we first got married, he was like, you know, I'm going to change and, and write during the day. I said, no. And, you know, you, you did it this way for a reason. You've always done it this way. I don't want to, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Okay. You have to work within the parameters of the person you're supporting. And if you wasn't going to do that, then you shouldn't have married the woman in the first place. So. Plus, I think this actually brings up a really interesting point. Like, I am creative, but I'm not a writer. Mm -hmm. So, you two being writers, that is a whole different dynamic, mm -hmm. different dynamic. in the relationship. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that if you're in that position and you're both being creators and writers, like, the way you negotiate that is going to be really different than me who is 
currently creative in how to manage my children and the household. And so that's just something to think about of, of how do you do you work how does your working style work together as a partnership and in your home environment and with your family and group dynamics? And make that work for you. Make yeah, that make home it. Dynamic. Don't look to me for an ex as an example because no, I don't we'll match what like your challenges you are. Make, what you're, you're saying. You've got to make tough decisions and decisions maybe you don't want to do, but it's for the better of the couple. So, mm -hmm. you know, I met my wife when she was already successful to a lot of degrees. She was six figure author when I met her. Um, so I. I what she needed was a stay-at-home dad. Okay. So that's the role I took. Mm -hmm. You know, I was mm -hmm. more than willing to just work, mm -hmm. but that's not what she needed. She needed a stay-at-home dad, so we, you know, we, we started a family together. But that's, and that's, it's still support, it's just a Yeah, it's, it's just a different so. type. But when I started writing, out, so. and she supported my writing, um, you know, she's still the bigger author. So when it came to the point when her career was getting bigger and bigger, because of from my support, she managed, before we met, she wrote four books, five books only. After, you know, after we got together, she started writing you know, four a year, mm -hmm. and then it was five a year, and then it was 10 a year. So you know, she grew, and as she grew, I couldn't be a stay-at-home dad anymore because we needed to build a business that could support mm -hmm. her growth. So we had to maybe put my writing on hold and build a business, mm -hmm. but that's the decision. Just don't give up on what you need. Mm -hmm. Don't give up on what you need. Don't you, lose yourself. You are going to enjoy what their success is and all those good things that are happening. But when there's a bad day, you're going to be in it with them. And it doesn't matter whether you wanted to be or not. You're in it. Mm -hmm. But don't give up on yourself because you are that person that they're going to need to rely on. Okay. Right. We've Thank got you. Bridget said, I just want to add on to that. She said, Team Korea, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's not like a zero sum game. Like, you guys are going to work together. So it's not about manipulating their situation to make it better for yourself, nor is it about being a doormat and just kind of whatever you need. Mm -hmm. It's the balance of what's going to make right. that team and family work, especially if you have children involved, yeah. right? At the end of the day, it's going to be about making sure you have a good supportive environment for the family as a whole. And if the business, you can work together and make it a business to create the dynamic, know your lanes, know yourself, know your strengths, know your weaknesses and how those can collaborate. And if you're weak in the same areas, right, that's where you can hire third party, get some support because it needs to be a strong unit because there's enough external forces um, obstacles for you to get in the way that you don't need that at home and that way and it just you know it, it works better for the peace in the household and for everyone um like sanity okay we've got about 14 minutes though is there any other questions I can leave. Wow. I got one. Always, <laughs> always got another question. Sure. So, uh, everybody loves to speak to like they've got an answer for something. You know, like it's kind of nobody not nobody doesn't like not having an answer for a question. So, uh, what's the? I mean, for each of y'all, what's the leading edge for you guys? What's the area where you're like, I'm not hitting 100 percent on this, or I'm growing in this area when it comes to my spouse as an officer? You can come first, Sharon. I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, in other words, we all like talking to our strengths and how to do it right and not a dot. What's the area where it's like, I, I'm not batting 100. Oh. I'm not that's doing it right. That, that list is really about your own. Yeah, that's a long list. So. Yeah. Yes. So identifying, he's asking about identifying his weaknesses. Your weaknesses? Yes. I think every, every yours or theirs. Oh. Like, what are okay? Every, everybody everybody has their weaknesses, mm -hmm. and yes. you know, and it may be that they just don't trust their writing, or it may be that they're not good at advertising. We, I've never written a Facebook ad or an Amazon ad in my life. Okay, uh, we've always had you know the support of traditional publishing that, that did the advertising. We've never had an agent. We've never had a bunch of things that you know everybody else has. So I've never had to do that. I have had to learn how to figure out how to get him through a con uh, in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. uh, David likes to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare. I am, I am taciturn. Right. <laughs> yes, that's the word. Don't think um, that means what you think it does. It does not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paulette. Thank you, Paulette. 
Um, I have I have had to learn uh, time manipulation skills that were not my forte, because I also, like I said earlier, I'm dyslexic, so I have I have issues with time management. I've had to learn to go back in and figure that out, uh, and that was before the kids ever came along or any of that stuff. I've had to learn how to get him from a panel to another panel and to an you know, to a signing him back and make sure that he eats in there somewhere and maybe occasionally sleeps and stuff. Because otherwise he will not do it. He will run himself into the ground and has done so repeatedly in our, in our lifetime together. Um, so you have to find what you're maybe not the best at and figure it out. And if you can make yourself be better in that, in that moment, um, I, I never thought I would be sitting in front of people wanting to learn from something I did. I have taken so many young, sp young, young spouses who didn't know how to go to a con and how to walk through a con, and I've, I've taught them, this is how you manage your writer at a convention. This is what you do, and this is how you do it. And I never thought that was a strength of mine, but evidently it, it has become so. And I when are you making the course for us? <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. Actually, David is working on some master classes now. Um, and it, it, we're um, also going to do a uh, in-person uh, writers conference. I'm, I'm going to interrupt. Sometime next year. Josh, David, Josh. No, no, Josh. 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 This is important. This is important. Sharon has done all of this while dealing with 33 surgeries, people. Wow. Okay, he can talk if he's going to brag on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in our first 20 years of marriage, I had 28 surgeries, so including spinal surgery. So. Um, so yeah, he supports you. Yes, like you support it, him. There's that 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 mutual, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to figure out what what you can do and build on it. So yes. You mentioned uh, the idea of the resource of the five love languages mm -hmm. as one of the litmus that you use mm -hmm. to identify ways that you can support. Are there any other uh, texts or or you know filters that you guys, whether it be Myers Briggs or Enneagram for authors, or there any other uh, filters like that that have helped you? know more about your spouse so that you would know the way to support them like the five love languages? Just know you're totally different. You have two different people. The guy of a 19 year old and a 21 year old, totally different people. We are different. So that's why I said about ask me what I need. That yes. doesn't happen often. I, but I ask them what they need from me. And if it's drive somewhere and listen to his brainstorming or type the notes that he wants for the next page and things like I that. Know, so. David and I had some real communication issues when we were first married. Mm -hmm. And we, we did couples therapy, you know, just to figure out how to, how, to, how to talk so the other one would listen better. Uh, there was a phrase that, uh, a phrase that David used that, that I just, it just infuriated me every time he used it. And, it, and I would shut down. So I, I really, we had, to, we had to learn our love language. We had to figure that out. And that, that took some work. You know, life was work. I think that's going kind to of bring you closer to working with your spouse. That's the reality. And I think a lot of people were like, Are you a When people were quarantined together, yeah. right? People who hadn't spent that much time together in each other's space. You're in their mind, you're in their vulnerability. And I think it really is a test of um, the relationship, not in a negative way, because it's so beautiful when you figure out those spaces. There's nothing like that dance, really, of being in sync and supporting each other, being fulfilled, being challenged, and you're going to grow because you have to grow mm -hmm. because the platforms, the industry, the readership, the stories are always changing. And you, as whatever you're doing to support as a person and your author as an author as a creative and storyteller and an individual is also growing. So you're not like you figure it out today and in five years and 10 years and you're 25 done, yeah. years. No, like yeah. you're constantly evolving together. Mm -hmm. so so it's you're signing up to say, I'm in for this dance, right? I'm going to be your permanent dance partner. We're going to figure this out, and we're going to figure out our moves together and our rhythm. So a lot of times you want to be like, as an author, forget it, as a spouse. 
It's just as your person. As your person. So yeah. don't look at it with the author thing because it doesn't change who they are. It's just a part are. of that. It's, it's part just, of the whole picture. Yeah, that's just like the framework of where you're working. You, just, <coughs> you can look at, you know, how we love. I think that's another good one to understand more mm -hmm. of that background of like, well, why are they reacting to this the way they're reacting to this? Therefore, what can I do to let them know it's safe? secure, mm -hmm. supportive. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna pull this out from under them, this thing that they've learned to love so much. Mm -hmm. I don't love them because of this. I don't resent them with the time that they are or aren't there. I'm gonna withhold my comments because though it feels like it relates to me, it can be really undercutting to someone whose mm -hmm. words of affirmation means a lot. And so what, whatever it is, you just learn to love your spouse better and different than you've ever had to before. I agree. Plus, it can be really exciting. I mean, we're talking about this like it's some kind of torture. <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple of new things we know. There are, there are moments, there are moments <laughs> when it's that hard. But I actually think it's really fun. Oh, I love nice. coming to stuff like this and watching my yeah. husband. <laughs> oh, He's yes. so excited and share his passion and be enthusiastic about what he's doing. and enthusiastic about what bands are doing, what people are talking. Like, to me, that's that's really fun to, cool. to yeah. enjoy well, and participate last in. Last year, when we came to this, we're walking down the hall, no reason, just going somewhere, and someone said, M.A. Rothman! And I was like, oh my gosh, he was noticed. Like, that was, because we're at home, he's writing, I'm doing my thing. He's just boring <laughs> husband. He's just, yeah. he's just Mike. <laughs> Like the fact that he was, I mean, he thinks he's everybody when it comes to his <laughs> followers and all those things. But it was a uh, wow for a me moment, yeah, like, because I was like, that's fun. so cool. Someone okay, well, well, another, from another you. point of view, this may sound controversial at first. No. Yeah, trust me, it's not. No. 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 <laughs> Something to think about is it is okay to argue. Oh, yeah. yes. It is okay oh, yeah, yeah. to fall out. Yes. It is, but you, you, just but you still have to be it. there in the morning when they wake up. You know, you still have to be there. If you don't them. learn from falling but. out, I mean, no one's going to be perfect. No one's always going to be supportive 100% of the time because you have your own shit to deal with. So, you know, everybody's got their stuff. Everybody has a bad day. As long as you learn from making that mistake, yeah. mm -hmm. you move on. And yeah. there's got to be a lot of fights because. It's never going to work perfectly. See, and one. I like to think of it more of like, I don't get anything out of winning a fight with my husband. Yeah. Right. But I am happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and scrap it out over problem-solving something together. Mm -hmm. And yeah. one of them is moving us forward, and, and the other one is, one is like yeah. just being mad at each other. Yeah, and I think an that that's kind of what you're touching yeah, on. Yeah, like, definitely. learn if from it and move forward. Who likes to write till three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, or however they like to do fourteen hour days, sixteen hour days, whatever it is, and they are on the burnout. You're probably going to turn around to them and say, you know, you need to stop writing, you're going to burn out, and they're not going to like it. No. Uh, and you will butt heads. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. I have got a question. Uh, when I read my wife's work, of course, like. There's nothing, of when? course, here. No. Do you, <laughs> do you, like she asked for critique back, and, oh. and I'm very reluctant to give any major critique because I don't want to change her way no, of writing. No, no, no. Be honest. What do you say? Be honest. Yeah, That's but, the main thing. But as I read it, I, I don't find anything wrong with it, and then I still kind of get in trouble. Like, why can't you? No, it's <laughs> or you might need to call a Virgin Korea and say, "Honey, I can't read your stuff because I can either be your biggest fan." Or I can be your biggest cheerleader. And you have a lot of fans, and nobody's ever going to be a bigger cheerleader than I am. And also, you know, Jennifer just said, and, you know, is it your genre? Because, because you know, if it's not your thing, you're not going to like it no matter how good it is. Exactly. If you're not the target audience, then who cares? Now, David has read me, you know, uh, scenes where. You know, he's trying to evoke a certain response, mm -hmm. and when he makes me cry, he knows he's hit it. You know, um, you know, if I'm in, that invested in, in in one scene on these uh, characters and what's happening to them, then he knows he's he's nailed it. Um, I I don't read all this stuff because we do talk about it ad nauseum, uh, and I just there's only so much I can handle. Also, because of the surgeries, I have some vision problems, so I don't read as fast as I used to. But you know, that that's again. How much support are you willing to give? If it's your genre and you love it, then go for it. 
Um, but also tell them the truth. If it's not working, tell them that it's not working. I told David, yeah, it's okay. And he knows that, yeah, he needs to go back and, and pound sand on it again. So we got two and a half minutes. Is there another thing? So when you compliment like a character, well, yeah. all of a sudden that character might become something like Jasper in a book. He might become another character in another book. Mm -hmm. Just because I mentioned it, it happened. So I supported by giving yeah. Well, I haven't read my wife's books. I mean, I've read the first book because we, we, we worked together on it. But we're both writers. But a big, it's not my genre. Um, so, you know, it's, not, it's, uh, it's also from a female point of view, which right. doesn't really resonate with me. So, but okay. we'll no, talk no about scenes. doesn't resonate with us yeah. either. So. So, we'll talk about, we'll, yeah. so we'll talk about scenes and, and we'll hash it out. And sometimes just being the sounding board, mm -hmm. I don't even actually have to say anything or give a plot idea or, or say this, that, and the other, and just sounding it out gives her the idea right. by the end of it. Okay, there was one, one other <coughs> question. If, if it's a short one, we got a minute and a half. Yeah, mainly my question's about, have you guys experienced in this lifetime of your career uh, doubt that your author spouse could make it, and how did you deal with that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, there's always gonna be that book or that chapter in that book that uh, you know your writer's going to hit that wall and they're going to go, this is the worst crap I've ever written. Nobody's ever going to read this. Nobody's ever going to pay money for it. And and you can either sit there and go, yeah, it's crap, or you can sit there and support them and say, you know, you thought that about the last eight books that you did, and they they were great. <coughs> you know. Um, so again, it's that support thing. But yes, there's going to be times when you know there, there's a recession on and people aren't buying books and people are. You know, you, you're really struggling financially. Um, there's that's always going to happen, but that's going to happen no matter what the job is. Yeah. So that's, that's, any, job. that's any career. It's any career. It's you know, and and there's been times when I've had to you know go back and pick up some slack that I wasn't planning on picking up, and there's been times when David's had to work those 18, 16, 18, 20 hour days to make it work. So. All right. You okay. can do it. You can do it. <laughs>